If you may find yourself right now in the phase where many limiting beliefs are are becoming more familiar to you, like you may recognize how much you feel really, really stuck in your mind. Like you want to do something, but there are so much fears coming up. Or maybe a certain situation in your life may be falling apart. Like maybe when it comes to finances or when it comes to your relationships or sometimes we feel like everything is just falling down, right? We need to recognize those phases as a part of our evolution. Sometimes we may describe those phases as a wake-up call. If you feel like that right now, well, I want to talk about this because you're not alone and often we are moving through those phases and those are important phases we shouldn't ignore, we shouldn't distract ourselves from them. And if we just talk about distraction right now, well, what is distraction? Well, we have a certain path in life, something that we are, some, like we have a destination. We want to get somewhere. And then distraction is an action that is pulling us away from that path, right? So we need to ask ourselves, what's my wanting future destination that I'm walking towards right now? And what is not allowing me to get there? Because it's important to, to get to this realization, that especially in this phase that we are talking right now, in this lower phase. As I mentioned, we are moving in this kind of cycles. When you see the, the waves on the sea, they go in those kind of flows, right? That's how the energy is flowing. We see it all over the place. And when we get into this lower phase, sometimes people describe it, oh, I, I feel a negative energy. I feel heavy energy, more dense energy. No, what you feel is that what was before unconscious, what was before suppressed is coming to the surface. You are purifying. This is, it's a, a heavy phase if um, we are not paying attention to, to what's coming up. But if we pay attention to what's coming up, we may recognize, well, I knew this is coming. I knew and I know right now I need to deal with that because on the other side, there's a greater version of me. On the other side, there's a new version of me and I can only become that version if I deal with what I'm moving through right now. So things may be falling apart and that's a sign that what you want is coming to you. But firstly, you need to deal with what is not allowing you to get to where you want to be, right? So look at it as... A phase of purification, that's something I often mention to you. But it's still not easy to move through that phase, right? So what can help us on this, um, on this uh, present phase? Well, recognize your deepest fears right now. Recognize your deepest fears. And as you may pay attention to them and notice what they are saying to you, ask yourself, what would be the worst case scenario? What would be the worst case scenario? Because when I'm dealing with my fears, I always ask myself that. And then if you look into your past, how often the worst case scenario happened, you may recognize that most probably never. But if it did happen, it happened for the greater good of your evolution. And it brought you to somewhere where you truly needed to be. And at some point you were really grateful for that breakthrough. And that's how we start studying our emotions, especially fear. Because fear is not just something to ignore or something to suppress. We need to study our fear. Because, you see, when we are thinking about ourselves, we have like some pieces, pieces of the puzzle, but we don't see the whole puzzle. Because that's uh, why we've come here at the first place, to put that puzzle together and become whole again, right? So wholeness is basically seeing 
and being aware of all of yourself. But it's not just something we say, oh, I'm whole and it happens. It's something that happens as we move through all kind of possible different situations and we choose to serve rather than just um, look what we can get, right? Because through service, we are learning also more about ourselves. Through giving, we are learning more about ourselves. It's not about focusing on what we are receiving. It's about how much can we give. Because that's when we notice the most about ourselves. And, for example, when you have a really, really low, hard day. And, like, it feels everything is falling apart. Everything is really, really heavy. But you meet a homeless man and you give some money to that homeless man and suddenly you feel lighter how often it happened to you or let's say you don't have money and you give a generous smile to a stranger and that stranger then comes to you and says you have so beautiful eyes sometimes things like that happen And we can't really explain why those things happen that way. But we can recognize that life is just encouraging us to give more. Because when you give more, you get in touch with the beauty that was unseen to your eyes before. Right? And what it means? It means that sometimes we just can't see a way out of where we are right now. But we can always decide to do something differently. And when doing is related to giving, we always pull ourselves out with a beautiful sense of care and compassion. And that sense brings us to to gratitude. Because something interesting may happen during that process that may remind us that we are always connected. And before I thought, well, I'm alone in this process and the universe is punishing me. But then you just notice, well, I just needed a new perspective, right? That's why I love so much making these videos and connecting with people, because that was not something common for me. But when I started doing that, I've noticed, well, it really gives me a sense of meaning. And it's always something more than you can, that you can give. Because I'm coming from an environment where people were looking on homeless man, people, for example, as those are those, the lazy ones, right? Don't give anything to them because they will obviously just uh, buy a wine and they will get drunk or something like that. So as I was growing up listening to the stories, I've develop that belief that I shouldn't give my money to those people. So even sometimes when I knew that uh, it would be good, I still didn't because I had that belief. But at some point I decided, well, I will start giving money because it's, I don't care if that person will truly buy a vine or, or whatever. But I've noticed that I start to feel better when I do that. So let's see if there's something else that I could give today. Is there someone else I could help? And it creates that uh, powerful shift in our perception because we recognize we are part of this society. And it's not about waiting that somebody will save and uplift that collective consciousness. It's about how can I be a piece of the puzzle that may create more meaning to that whole structure of us, right? How can I provide a bit more meaning, more light, more um, light sensation, right? Because every time we receive something, we feel a bit lighter. Somebody may tap us on our shoulder, hey, you did a really good job, and you feel a bit lighter. When you do that for somebody else, 
that person feels a bit lighter and because you know that you maybe want to do more of those things and the beauty is that it helps us to overcome so much of our heavy sensations that sometimes we feel we're dealing with that on our own right the the whole world is moving through that we all have those limiting beliefs we all have this this full stories about ourselves that define us and when then we think we are alone thinking all egoistically taking care like caring just about us while everybody is hurting and if we actually decide let's let's help can i provide something may not just uplift you but somebody else as well and that's a beautiful act right so if you're dealing right now with anything heavy like you may be uh like your your trust into the process may be questioned like before you had trust while well, everything is working for me until you've started dealing with all the fears and what we call negative sensations and suddenly you've recognized well maybe i i don't really trust the process maybe i'm 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 really scared because if i don't see evidences then nothing is happening for me that's where you start building faith right that's that's where we are building the muscle it's not when all is good it's when all is is bad and and we need to deal with those human emotions and all the stories that are coming up all the thoughts that may become present right and and there is no way around it there is no shortcut but to move through it because that's how you get to know yourself better you recognize well it is a part of myself it's a part of my past that's why I'm scared. Maybe you've been through something traumatic. It's a part of your past. Can I appreciate that part of my past a little bit more? Can I forgive myself a little bit more? How can it be done? Well, be with yourself. But also be open to talk with somebody who's maybe going through something similar. Connect with people. Because that's why there are so many of us, right? If you would not need people, you would be alone. But there's many of us. And if you're willing to step outside of your shell, at some point I'm sure you will meet somebody who may help you. Or maybe you can help that person and will uplift both of you. So, you see... As the phase of ups and downs is a natural process of evolution, we may look at it as something that goes narrow, like ups and downs go goes like narrow, but actually it goes upward spiral. That's why every time we get back in to our into a certain challenging um, phase, we get a bit more, a bit smarter, a bit wiser. A bit more aware, a bit more compassionate, a bit more understanding. And in that phase, when it repeats, we get a new approach or we try a new pro approach and we recognize what works, what doesn't work. And that's what um, builds intelligence in our system. Because we start decluttering all the nonsense from what truly matters. So if you may find yourself right now in that kind of a phase. Well, accept it. Deal with it. And be open to help somebody. Be open to share your vulnerability with somebody. And in case you're an artist, a creative person, use the sensations for creative expression you can make art out of it you can channel them you see we all have certain gifts within us and the purpose of those gifts is to channel the energy sometimes energy gets stuck because we are not using our gifts right 
Sometimes you could use fear for inspiration. Sometimes you may deal with something hard and you can make an artwork out of that, which may inspire somebody that may be going through something similar. That's why I love hip hop so much. Many conscious rappers out there are doing such an amazing job. They've been through hard life and they've, they've been able to create inspiring music, like thanks to Bliss and Issa, for example, an Australian group, KRS-One, we had Tupac, right? Those are great artists. NF, amazing artists. And we have, you know, we have those examples to see that sometimes when we don't know how to deal with something, we actually just need to find what's my gift and channel that something out of you because it may inspire somebody who's who's dealing with something that you're dealing with right now and immediately you will feel that that's what you needed to do and that's how we are helping others so you see there's infinite ways to to help but you need to recognize what feels really really natural for you and sometimes it may be scary, because what feels natural is not always easy. But it awakens passion within you. So if you love to do it, if you're passionate about it, then all is well. So my friends, I will leave you here. I hope you found something valuable today. I'm sending you lots of love, blessings and power. Have a beautiful day. Until next time. One love.